Hi, this is Shira Rubinoff. I'm here with Insights in Tech. I'm here with Tom Kellerman, Head of Cybersecurity Strategy at VMware. Tom, thank you for joining me once again on Insights in Tech. I interviewed. Yeah, no, thank you. I've interviewed you earlier on during this COVID pandemic, and we spoke quite a bit about how people and organizations can secure themselves remotely and different tips and ideas on how to do so, whether it being security itself, their mindset, proper cyber hygiene, and of course, strict company protocol and how to communicate throughout the organization during this time. So Tom, we are now entering a phase of slowly opening up businesses and that itself creates challenges of readjustment. What do you see being the biggest challenge of slowly moving back to the norm of organizations' daily life? Well, let me begin by noticing um, what's going on in the wilderness here. And the wilderness basically has dictated that cyber attacks have dramatically increased. Um, VMware Carbon Black statistics show a 238% increase of cyber attacks against individuals and corporations during this pandemic. And as it relates to that, we're going to be dealing with a long-term infestation of corrupted endpoints and laptops that will be coming back into the organization, as well as pre-existing backdoors placed on home networks that allow for hackers now to use the telework experience of individuals to island hop into those primary orgs. Well, what can you say to organizations? How could they somewhat, I wouldn't say prevent it, but mitigate some of this risk that they will be facing as this kind of moves into the new normal that we're going to face? Well, it's imperative that they actually do a scan and an assessment of all of their infrastructure for backdoors or remote access Trojans or a privilege access that shouldn't be allowed uh, because more than likely they're dealing with an adversary that already has a footprint on a system. So expanding cyber threat hunting across their infrastructure will be an imperative. Um, ensuring that just-in-time administration is the go-to uh, norm for access to sensitive systems. And micro-segmentation, I think, will be fundamental in, in inhibiting lateral movement that may already have, a, have occurred previously when everyone was working from home. Now, interesting. What about people themselves beyond the organizations? What can they do to mitigate their own personal risk um, as we start to have that mindset shift? Well, it's quite an adjustment. You know, there's many of us who enjoy working from home and many of us who miss the workplace and the camaraderie of the workplace. And, and balancing the two, I think, will be the best way forward. I, I hope that businesses move to a four-day work, work week. I hope that they still allow for uh, non-essential personnel to telework uh, during this time, as more than likely we will see a second wave of this terrible virus in the coming weeks. Yeah, sadly, I agree. And Tom, as the world moves to the new normal, whatever form that will take, what is you see being the most important areas that organizations need to focus on moving forward beyond what you mentioned already? Organizations need to appreciate that the worst case scenario has changed, that their digital transformation efforts will be commandeered and their infrastructure will be used to conduct island hopping against their customers mm -hmm. and their partner systems. Uh, reputational risk and brand protection will be the imperative uh, for most organizations. And to achieve that, I think that this will be the year finally that cybersecurity is no longer viewed as an expense, but rather a functionality of conducting business. As it's all in our best interest to essentially maintain proper cyber hygiene, I do also think that the definition of cyber hygiene and the way in which we defend critical infrastructure and in our own businesses will have to shift. Uh, we will have to look inwards it will have to be more of an inside out perspective, an intrinsic security perspective, one where we have the capacity to decrease dwell time because I do think that decreasing dwell time is now uh, the true ROI for success when it comes to cybersecurity professionals. And Tom, with maybe with feet on the ground and being at the forefront of the cybersecurity world, is there any real world examples that you could share with our audience of something you saw that you didn't necessarily expect to see in the cyber world during this pandemic? <laughs> well, actually, there's a, a <laughs> there's a fantastic report that just came out, um, the annual report of FISMA compliance to Congress. And within this report, somewhere deep in this report, this voluminous report, there is a chart about attacks that have been successful against the United States government agencies. And whereas attacks, overall attacks have gone down, unknown attacks have gone up. 
as well as attrition attacks, destructive attacks have gone up. And this corresponds with the data from VMware Carbon Black that shows an uptick of destructive attacks. I'm truly shocked at the, at the punitive nature of cyber criminals in today's world. Uh, I'm also shocked that even the United States government is stating that they've seen a dramatic up increase of unknown attacks and attrition attacks against federal government agencies. And unknown attacks, I mean, frankly, let, let's cut to the chase. W what is that? An unknown attack is frankly, they had no idea or they have no telemetry that it even came into the organization to begin with, which means that they probably had a footprint on systems previously. And this corresponds to research by VMware Carbon Black that says access mining and island hopping are exploding. There are forums out there dedicated to the provision of access to specific corporations and entities, um, companies that have been backdoored previously by hackers who now realize there was a utility in selling that backdoor and that footprint to another entity. And the, the fees for access to these forums is $5,000 per remote access Trojan. In addition, you have to pay 30% of your criminal crime conspiracies profits okay. to said forum. It's fascinating to me. That's so interesting. Do you think also that maybe the uptick might be due to them feeling that organizations might be a little distracted? They might not have their best foot forward. They might be more focused on keeping their employees happy or working on this whole remote work idea or remote work world that they're not as savvy as they were before. I, I would. I would agree. I would agree with you wholeheartedly. I would also, then the rush to facilitate telework and the rush to ensure the physical uh, safety of their of their employees and employee families. Um, this widespread adoption of technology has created this Achilles heel, yeah. and now the hacker can use your VPN tunnel to bypass all your perimeter defenses and even move payloads through it. And so we need to appreciate again that more than likely, as we get back to work, we have a massive cleanup exercise underway to get rid of the back doors and the infestation that was probably left in our systems over the past five months. I know. And Tom, when people talk about the future of work, it can be looked at from many different lenses. When it comes to security, is there a specific area that might be moving in a faster pace because of COVID-19 than it would have had this pandemic not happened? And again, if you could compare before between what might have been thought of at the beginning of this pandemic and now as it has been progressing over the last number of months. Well, two, two areas, specifically video conferencing and fintech, um, and both are being exploited by cyber criminal syndicates and cyber spies. Uh, when it comes to FinTech, most of the time what you see is viable attacks attacking the API associated with the FinTech mm -hmm. and then using that to attack anyone who connects to it. A new form of basically leveraging that platform into an island hopping platform to go after the trusted communications and or um, data therein. And then when it comes to video conferencing, we've seen enough of it in the news, but the potential of a person to hack your home, uh, your office, and become physically present using the proximity settings of mics and cameras uh, is something we need to be very concerned with, particularly as it relates to any sort of room meeting that may be held specific to the strategies of that org when it comes to mergers and acquisitions, when it comes to financial results, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you did talk about that in our first interview quite a bit. And as this pandemic has progressed, are there any other tips that you might want to give to our audience just around securing their space and securing their environment in order to mitigate any of these kind of risks? Well, when you're working from home, again, I stress, you need to have a, a safe room, a room that is safe from digital devices where you can have sensitive communications. Uh, in addition, you have to do conduct digital distancing. You need to segregate the networks where your work device or any device that's accessing your finances from the smart devices and the family's devices in that home. Uh, but most importantly, I think you should limit the attack surface on the device itself. So whether or not you've deployed next-gen AV and whether or not you're using Mozilla as a browser, you should also limit the profiles on your device. When you are conducting sensitive uh, business transactions or financial transactions, you should be using a profile on your computer that does not have administrative rights. Just in case that profile gets commandeered, it's not that easy for them to escalate privileges. I actually wanted to touch on another topic around devices I'm not sure we spoke about it last time, more of the BYOD. You know, there were different um, allowances and organizations and different uh, rules and, and security around that. And once COVID hit and we're now remote working, that kind of goes out the window. And people are almost back and forth between their devices. Obviously, there's protocol around organizations and specific rule sets. Is there any type of, of 
uh, tips that you can give to our audience around that or organizations themselves when they're dealing with the cross uh, pollination of, of these devices? Well, yeah, I mean, look, mobile device managers are imperative um, to your success here. The challenge is many MDMs are dumb. They don't have the context necessary to thwart behavioral anomalies on a device. Um, many of these devices are allowed to connect to Wi-Fi networks without being forced to use VPN tunnels or other means of communication security. Um, and many of these devices have administrative rights deployed for the user when they shouldn't, uh, which is, goes back to my previous point about just-in-time administration. Right, right. Uh, we need to mainstream just-in-time administration, and we need to ensure that mobile device managers are, are deployed on these devices. Uh, personnel need to become aware that uh, just like they feel they've lost some of their privacy and their freedoms as it relates to their physical lives uh, due to this pandemic. Um, privacy in a digital construct cannot be achieved without cybersecurity. And their worst case scenario for their career and for their families will be if their mobile device is commandeered to be used to attack their home as well as their business. Well, very, very true points, Tom. And any last thoughts you'd like to leave our audience with? No, I, I, I just hope for the best for everyone. I truly hope that we begin in earnest to, to rebuild our society. But more importantly, we need to appreciate that criminality has, has morphed and we are dealing with a digital, digital insiders that exist within our environments as we speak. And the first item of priority should be to conduct those cyber threat hunting exercises. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tom, for your insights and your valuable information as always. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you.